So here is the CPU socket. Pretty simple and straightforward. It's got a cover on top right here. The CPU really only installs one way and you can kind of see a notch right here where it's not a point. So you're going to see the same on the CPU and then also the little plastic case cover shows the pointer. Here's the CPU itself. Opened it. And the underneath where your pins are going to be is always protected by a cover. And here is the underneath. And you should see like a little gold right there. That's the arrow that matches up. From here, line up the arrows. You'll see the notches on here. It's kind of self-explanatory, I think. That's it. Pretty simple. I did forget to show that this is just a plastic cover. I mean, if you're wondering what it is, it just it was on top like that. You just flip it off. No big deal. All right. Now we're ready to mount the CPU cooler. Okay. Bring it into view there. Now, what I'm going to go over everybody has an opinion on and everybody is going to be a professional on. So this, I will just say, is the way I've been doing it for years. I've built a lot of custom PCs. If you build them too, I think that's great. You probably have your own methods and swear by them and what have you. So, what I usually do is I recommend you get 91% rubbing alcohol, okay? microfiber cloth and I really like Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste also just a plain old business card for spreading or a credit card or you can go and buy a little professional little plastic spreader as well now I use the rubbing alcohol the microfiber to clean the surface it comes out of the box, I'm sure it's clean, and the same thing with your heat sink, but I clean both the CPU and the heat sink. It just ensures that it's going to have the best contact possible. That's the whole point of this. There are some people that won't even use thermal paste. Their uh, Intel has some thermal compound on their heat sinks. Some people say you put the thermal compound on the heat sink rather than the CPU, and then some people will draw lines on the CPU, dots, what have you. So, like I said, everybody's a professional, everybody has an opinion, that's the way I do it. I like to have as little debris as possible so the contact to escape the heat out of the CPU is the best possible, most efficient. Sorry, I'm out of frame. At that point, once you've wiped them down, do everything, everything possible not to touch the surface of either the heat sink or the CPU backplate here. All right, I'm going to take the Arctic Silver, and the idea is to get a very tiny ball in the center there. That's it. Do not get this compound on any of the motherboard. It is conductive. Then you're going to just simply spread it very thinly.
trust me, that little blob, you can spread it everywhere on this back plate. You don't need to keep adding any more thermal paste. Just put some pressure to it, you know. You don't have to baby it. It will <laughs> spread. Because you want this thin. When all is said and done, it will look like that. It'll have a thin layer. If you do get the stuff everywhere, like I have some on here, just wipe it off. Use some rubbing alcohol and get it off. You'll have to excuse me. I'm trying to do this from behind a camera. So there you go, that's the final product. Again, everybody has their own methods and their opinions and things like that. This is the way I've been doing it for years. And again, most people get really worried about the thermal paste and how much, like I said, what I put there is enough and it will spread. If you, if you, of course, if you go very lightly and things like that, it may it, take you longer and this and that, but put some pressure. It will, it's gonna spread nice and evenly for you. Now I'm putting on the heat sink, just place it straight on top. Read the instructions. Every heat sink is different, guys. This just, just has the easy push pins that you're going to push in and lock, that's all. So we have the finished product. Make sure that you plug in the CPU fan. You find the location on the motherboard. It's also going to be labeled on the motherboard and just plug it in. Sometimes it's four pins, sometimes it's three pins. If it, it, if it is a 4-3 pin, this little back plate right here will kind of be to one side as it is with this because this is a 3 pin power connector. And so it only can fit really one way. I think it's self-explanatory.